come on, let's go. We're in Bosway. Those cattle must be to start on time. What's going on? It's not Saturday. What are you washing your feet for? It ain't my idea. Mr. Hoss sprained ankle. Oh, yeah? How'd you do that? He slipped on pencil. On what? Pencil. I stepped on that. It rolled under my foot. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about it. It's only writer's cramp. Yeah, I'm going to that dang meeting. No meeting. You keep foot in hot water. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with it. This, this dang pop jockey just wants to claim doctor. Nothing wrong. It's... Ah! Ow! You keep foot in hot water. Bandage, plenty rest, pretty quick, ankle all right. It is a little swollen, eh? Go, you go to meeting. Okay. You stay here, keep foot in hot water. Take care of yourself. I'll tell all the guys in town about your heart and life. Yeah, give them my regards. Tell me, they good. So, come die the time, sick of something. Sandy. He must have been in that hotel scene if he could rescue any strays and got trapped himself. Three fires in two months. Too many to be accidental. I agree with you, Mr. Tucker. There's a barn burner loose, all right. I know the signs. When I was sheriff of Van Buren County, I caught three of them. I heard about that wall. It's better than our law officers can do. Um, any word on Sandy? No, not yet. Doc said he'd come over as soon as he could. What about Mrs. Lund? Oh, she turned up all right. Angry, but safe. Three fires in two months. Somebody's setting them. Mr. Tucker, as dry as this town is, any chimney spark could start a fire, and you know that. A hundred thousand dollars worth of damage, and you're talking about chimney sparks? Well, it's a fact, isn't it? No, it isn't. Sheriff! I was poking around near where the fire started. Found this. Cold oil. I knew it. It was arson. There's more bad news. I met the doc on the way over here. Sandy Anderson's dead. Oh. Now it's arson and murder. Well, Sheriff? I'll investigate. Investigate? You want this man caught, tried, and jailed? Every woman in town is scared to death. My wife's afraid to go to bed. Fear the house will burn. Three fires, no arrests. Maybe you'd better step down and let a man who can handle the job take over. Mr. Wall is right. 
Another fire in Virginia City. We'll get ourselves a new sheriff and a new deputy. Excuse me. It wasn't your fault. You don't know what it's like being responsible for a man's death. But you're not responsible. I told a lot of people that and Roberta was in the hotel. Sandy Anderson might have been one of those persons. Listen to me, Janie. We know Sandy Anderson was in the hotel and on the second floor before the fire ever started. You see, you had nothing to do with Mr. Anderson's death. been a long night. You two must be very tired. Mm. Yes, everybody in town is tired, Mrs. Mott. You two are homeless, though. I think you better come out with us to the Ponderosa. No, Rosa. thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Wade Tucker has been kind enough to lend me his home. Oh, well. We lost our clothes, but we have a place to stay. Very nice place. Well, it's closer to the stores than the Ponderosa. Yeah. My uh, niece and your deputy make a handsome couple, Sheriff. I've noticed she wasn't very happy about coming to Virginia City, but all that's changed now. Janie, we better be going now. We have to be up early. We have a lot of shopping to do. Mrs. Lund, was that why you went back into the hotel to try to save your clothes? No, it wasn't, Sheriff. It was to save my jewel box. It was in the bureau drawer. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, Mrs. Lund. Since you're carrying that, it might be wise if I walked you ladies home. It's a good idea. If the ladies don't mind. We'd be delighted. Oh, Sheriff, Wade Tucker is very angry with you. He wants me fired. He has powerful friends. He's a stubborn man. But I'll do what I can to change his mind. I'll appreciate that. Night. Right. Wade Tucker isn't wasting any time, is he? Oh, you got a lot of friends, Roy. Yeah, but right now they're mostly scared and afraid the houses are going to burn down. Well, Roberta's on your side. She's got a lot of powerful friends, too. Yeah? She's got more money than she can count. How about a cup of coffee? Uh, yeah, that's go real good. Did you hear what she said about that jewel case? Yeah. Two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewels in a little bitty box? And she leaves it in the bureau drawer in the hotel. Here. She comes back from Europe, she's going to build a new house, spend a fortune on it. One more fire, and more than likely she'll change her mind. That'll make every merchant in town yell for my neck. You getting a little spooked, Roy? You betcha I am. I've been wearing this badge for a lot of years now, and I can handle robberies and rustling and a lot of other things, but when it comes to a fire bug, I'm, I'm just in trouble, Ben. I could use your help. You know you've got it, Roy. Thanks, man. I gotta investigate, and I have no idea where to start. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of hard. The ashes from the hotel probably tell us something. We'd have to wait till daybreak. What about those two fires last month? Anything strange about them? Well, there was nothing that I noticed. One of them was a warehouse. Yeah, a Silver City warehouse. The building was locked. Cold ashes in the stove. The place just plain exploded. By the time the fire department got there, it was almost gone. Barn burner, it had to be. Yeah, and Sheriff Coffey did absolutely nothing. I'd look for a man with a grudge. That's what pushes burners, grudges and hate. And if he didn't find them, then what? Deputize citizens will patrol the town from dark until daylight. When a man turns burner, he doesn't quit until he's caught. Well, then he could be out there right now, getting ready to burn the rest of this town. Very easy. There's nobody there to stop him.
it's all about. You were too busy, so he did your work for you. He's the firebug. Firebug? All right, Ira, let's hear it. We found him in the alley by the burned-out hotel. There's no law about being there. So it's coming and he ran. That's proof right there. An honest man wouldn't have any reason to run. Now, see, if you're charging at him, a man would be a fool not to. Now, what were you doing in the alley? Going home. He was going to start another fire. That's the way it is with burners. It's one fire after another. You know a lot about burners, don't you? I should. I've caught them. Roy, it took us a few questions, but we found out. He's the night cook at the Silver Dollar. His name is Smith. Whiskey Smith. The best cook in the He Went to work three hours before the hotel fire started. He worked straight through. Bartender, waitresses, the dishwasher, they'll all testify to that. Uh, told you. You three gentlemen owe Mr. Smith an apology. And if it happens again, I'll sue the pants off you. And I'm still going home. And if it happens again, I'll jail all three of you. Oh, all right, fellas, have it up here. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought I was just so anxious to find a fire bug up in at anybody. All I talk of barn burner. Brought something to mind, Ben. We had a barn burner here about eight, nine years ago on the Rock Ranch Ranch. Yeah, I remember that. The house almost went up. Okay. George Benson fired a, a hand by the name of Tim Moss. A Moss was mad at a hatter, and he swore he'd get even. That same night, Benson's barn went up in flames. We never did find Moss, but I hear he's back now. Yeah, he's back. I saw him just a few days ago. Where? He was hunting up around Old Squaw Creek. Old Squaw Creek? Well, his folks had a homestead up there. Uh -huh. Joe, I'd like to talk to him if... You'd ride out and show Clem where the place is, I'd appreciate it. Do it first thing in the morning. Fire! Fire! Here we go again. Second one tonight. Look at that. Cold oil again. Lovely, isn't it? imported lace and the finest silk when's the wedding dear we haven't set the date i know how difficult it is to make plans on a time like this most people in this town are afraid to go to bed for fear they'll be burned to death may i see that yes mm -hmm. It's a shame and a disgrace. And something has got to be done about it. There's a petition going around now to get rid of Sheriff Coffey and his deputy. By the deputy? Yes. Clem. You must have seen him on the street. Yes. We met in church. We both sing in the choir. He's the man I'm going to marry. Oh, I didn't mean anything against Clem. I was just telling you what I'd heard. How long does it take you to make a wedding dress like this? A week. I'll let you know. Thank you. Sounds like somebody's working. The horse's cabin is right up ahead. All right. Let's leave the horses here. We'll walk in.
Howdy, Moss. Well, howdy. Heard the shop and want to see what's going on. You know Clem here, don't you? I seen him around. When'd you get burned out? Oh, about five weeks ago. First night I got back. Bottom rusted out of my stove. Middle of the night, whole place went up. Yeah, it's a tough break. It can happen. Yeah, cabin stands empty, everything rusts. Well, the fire took just about everything I owned. I mean, a new axe, a couple of other things. Prices they charge in Virginia City took just about every dime I had. Just as well, though, if I'd had the price of a room, I'd have been in that hotel. Oh, you saw the fire then, huh? Yeah, I was getting ready to leave when it broke out. It made the one I had look like nothing. I'm gonna have to ask you to saddle your horse, Moss. Sheriff Coffee wants to talk to you. I knew this wasn't no friendly visit. Bringing the law here. I thought you were a friend of mine. I am, Moss. Just do what the man says, huh? Well, that's 32 names in a little less than an hour. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of that deputy. Well, it won't be long till you can. Mr. Tucker's got this recall running like a Swiss watch. There's 16 of us out with these petitions. Then here's a file on all the fires we've had in the last 10 years. Here's one I remember. West Livery Stable. It was started by a drunk who was trying to light a lantern. He dropped a match into the straw. He was here when the hotel fire started. Joseph Ponderosa, Ben, he asked me to tell you. When'd you get back, Tim? Five weeks ago. That's what he told Joe and me. I was on my own place, minding my own business, when this deputy drags me in here. What for? Because we've been looking for you for a long time. I got a warrant for your arrest, signed by the district attorney. Arrest? Why? Well, suspicion of arson, a barn burn on the Rock Arrest Ranch. Barn burning? The day you left town. You were fired about noon. You swore you'd get even. The barn went up that night. Not me. I was past Carson then, heading south. Oh, I didn't even know about it till now. In any case, I've got to hold you. The warrant is still in force, so let me have your valuables. I'll keep them safe for you. Little Joe, where you been? How come you come back so late? Fix me I cooked dinner late for you. You think I cooked 24 hours a day just Look, for I you? Said, fix me something to eat. Doc came out to look at my ankle. He told me about the fire. You make that plural. Fires at more than one. Is that a fact? You have any idea who's behind all this? They got Tim Moss in jail. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Why'd Roy arrest him? Pressure. And to arrest somebody, the whole town's on his back. Moss was the most likely candidate because he was mixed up in that barn burning over at Benson's place a few years ago. There was a reason for that. He and Benson had an argument. Benson fired him. No reason for him to burn the hotel in Virginia City or burn anything else. That makes sense. You know, arresting him and putting him in jail, that ain't the end of it. They still gotta let him stand trial. That's the part that worries me. I will say that Moss sure looks surprised. Yes, he did. And he admits that he was here for the warehouse fire as well as the hotel fire. He was near another fire, too, Roy. Where was that? You know that cabin out at the Moss homestead? It burned after he got back. Certainly piles up, don't it? Mm-hmm. 
But I'm still not 100% sure. I've got some stuff to clean up out back. Okay, if I get it now? Go right ahead. Right. There's one fire on this list that we haven't talked about. The Ross Hardcastle house. <laughs> that was seven years ago. Oh, Ross lost his life in that one. He was half owner in the Lucky Lund mine. He and Lucky weren't getting along very well. In fact, they were yelling at each other when Lucky Lund killed over the heart attack. Next thing you know, Ross's house burned. Yeah, there were some ugly rumors at the time, I remember. Well, well, it's bound to be with us three, four million dollars involved. Which Roberta Lund inherited. Yeah. And then she went to Europe. Then she came back and the fire started. Tell Mrs. Lund that uh, she have coffee and Ben Cartwright right here to see her, please. What do you two want? We've got to talk to Mrs. Lund. She's here. And she will be until her house is built. I told you we'd have a new sheriff. And we will have. 1,200 signatures in one day. Your privilege. <laughs> oh, no. My pleasure. He's still angry. But I did tell you he was. How nice to see you. You're just the people I wanted to see today. Uh, Won't you sit down? I, uh... I've been thinking about the man who died in the fire. Mr. Anderson. He's a miner, I understand. Out of work quite a bit of the time. That's right, ma'am. He died a hero. His wife and children need help. That's what I wanted to see you about. What did you have in mind, Mrs. Lund? I'd like to give a big, big party to raise money. That way, everyone in Virginia City can contribute. And I'm sure they'll all want to. Oh, I'm sure they would. I'm just wondering if... This would be the right time for it. Next week? Well, yeah, I think right now, uh, most everybody is pretty worried about their own homes going up in flames, and I don't think they'd want to go anywhere. I'm just wondering how many people would show up at that party. I hadn't thought of that. See, as soon as this whole thing is cleared up, I, I think everybody would be very happy to pitch in and help you make this the biggest party that ever was. How very nice of you. Thank you so much. Mrs. Lund, I... Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I realize that I haven't asked you why you came to see me today. I think I can guess. I profited by a fire in Virginia City some years ago. I hear there are some people who think I set that fire. I imagine even my name is on your list of suspects. Well, there is just one routine question that I have to ask you. And it's, where were you on the... Night the hotel fire started. I was giving a dinner party at the Nevada Club. Now, you may be right, Andy, but I still think it's his right foreleg. I'll be right with you, Jane. Come on up in here. I hear you caught the fire bug. And I think so. Sheriff Coffee's not so sure. Is he mean looking? Oh, well, I guess you can say he's mean looking, yeah. What's going to happen to him? Prison for life. If he's found guilty, man died in fire. I feel sorry for him. You don't mind if I feel sorry for him, do you? No. I don't mind. Oh, you're a very pretty girl. I'm a very lucky guy. I hope you still think so after I tell you what I did. Oh? And Roberta wants to have an engagement party for us. Oh. And I told her to go ahead. All that fuss. Isn't there some way we can get out of it? Women like that kind of fuss, Clem. Besides, it's only a small party day after tomorrow. Women like it, do they? All right. I surrender. And I went shopping for a wedding dress. I don't mind you shopping, but we may have to wait. Because of the petitions? Why, sure. I may be out of a job. Clem, I've been thinking about that. Why wait? I mean, you can quit your job now, and we can get married right after the party and go away. We can go to California or someplace. I mean, you can find another job, and I'll find go a away, job. Go away? I... 
I thought you liked it here in Virginia City. Not really. The only thing I've ever liked about Virginia City is you. Please, Clem. I want to get married as much as you do, Janie. Or more. But we can't. Not until this firebug thing is over. It's going to be all right. You just hang on. Wait right here for me. I've got to see the sheriff a minute. ready to send you to the Iron Hotel. You wouldn't eat either. That's your choice. Sheriff, I didn't set any of them fires. Sheriff, that's the truth. I swear it. Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. You gotta listen, Sheriff. Somebody's gotta listen. Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. Not been going on very long. He's been like that for three weeks now. He insists he's innocent. Well, most guilty men do. The point is that there's been no fire since Moss was locked up. Well, Roy, you feel a little more certain about him then? Ben, I wasn't until I heard that George Benson, that's the man who fired Moss, was at the hotel at the time the fire started. Motive, Moss still trying to get even. So that wrapped it up for me. Well, Roy, uh, I think there's something you want to hear. Dr. Quinn and I were talking in the Nevada Club, and he told me something that... Look, stop, sir. Well, now, some of this is supposition, but there is medical evidence to support a lot of it. There are people who are mentally ill who set fires without motive. They're not looking for money or revenge. They just like to see things burn. Are you trying to say that Moss is not guilty? No, 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 no. I'm saying that... The mental illness does exist. And most may have it. Well, that's possible. Those who do are moody, depressed, withdrawn, just before they set a fire. And happy when they watch the fire. And fulfilled afterward. I've seen a lot of these cases. I paid my way through medical school by working in an insane asylum. Well, then you've really seen these people. Oh, am I interrupting? No, 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 Clem. I said my piece. I'm on my way. Well, thank you, Doctor. Well, I thought you should know. Well, Roy, I'd like to come back tonight and talk to Moss, if I may. That'll be fine, Doctor. Thanks for coming. Clem. Uh, Mrs. London's having a little party tonight, both Janie and me. We'd both like to have you, Cho, and Haas there. Well, a party? Well, I... Gee, I'm not going to have enough time to get to the ranch and get back and, you know... Well, she knew it. you were going to say that. She told me to accept no excuses. You can come on as you are. I'll, I'll pick you up at the hotel. We'll be there. Fine. All right. Roy? Sit back. Come man. Is that stuff from Sacramento? Oh, good.
congratulations. To a long and happy life, and may all your children have wealthy parents. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Mm. Just in time, I'm gonna make a little longer toast this time. Poor Dr. Dighton. There hasn't been too much sunshine in Janie's life. Her mother died when she was born. Her father could never forgive Janie for her mother's death. Where's he now? He died tragically. After that, she was in boarding school for a while and passed back and forth from one relative to another. Then you came along. She should have been with me years ago. Well, look, Club, you've already got your girl. I think I better go find one for myself. I'll see you two later. <laughs> Do we really have to wait, Clem? Look, Janie, I've got a job to do. If I'd pick up and quit and just walk away, I'd have a hard time finding work as a deputy anywhere else. A new place. I just think it'd be better for both of us. Clem, I'd like to drink to this very happy occasion and wish the both of you the best of luck. Uh, thank you, Roy. Give me that. I swore in a new deputy tonight, but just to keep his eye on the jail so that I could make this celebration. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Sure. Yes. Hey, that champagne makes a pretty good drink, don't it? Good. Yes, thanks to you. Oh. Will you excuse me for a moment? What? Uh, excuse me, where's Janie? Oh, she was here. She excused herself. She must be in her room. And I understand the hardware store's going to change hands. Hmm. Janie? Something was bothering her. I guess maybe she thought her nose was shiny. You know what I think it is, Roy? I think she's a little nervous about getting married to Clem here. <laughs> <laughs>
Your horse is over the livery stable. That's one of the few buildings that didn't burn down. I hope your deputy's all right. I uh, saw him with this lady a time or two. She was mighty pretty. Trying to get organized out there anyway. The army's sending over tents. They're going to set up uh, just to the east grove there, just outside of town. Mm -hmm. And they're going to set up field kitchens and food and shelter for anybody who needs it. Good. With most of Virginia City burned down, just about everybody's going to need it. Yeah. Where's Clem? but this is one spring that never went dry. We came to the right place. Nothing now. But the grass around here used to be knee-deep this time of the year. That's what I said. We came to the right place. Yeah, I know. But I wish I believed it the way you do. <laughs> it's all right. I know them. Whenever I'm in this part of the country, I work for them. Till I get the itch to move again. I'll be doggone if it isn't Dusty Rose. Joe Cartwright. Ben, Hoss. How are you, Dusty, Dusty, how are you? Fine and dandy. Jamie? This here's Jamie Hunter. We're traveling together now. Howdy. Good to see you, Jamie. Howdy, Jamie. I remembered this spring and figured it'd be a good place to fill up for barrel and water a horse, but nothing but dust. Yeah. Been like this for about four months. This is the worst drought we've had in years, Dusty. Well, you've still got the lake. Well, it doesn't help the grass in the hills much. People can make it rain. Well. I, I've heard that some people can make it rain, if they know how. Yeah, but some people think they can, but I think it'll rain when it gets good and ready to rain. I hope it gets good and ready real soon. Boys, we better get along and find those strays. Esty, you and your young friend here, you come and have supper with us. Well, thank you. See you. Good to see you again. Look forward to it. If the Cartwrights don't think you can make rain, nobody else is going to think so either. But this isn't the only place suffering drought. We'll go on to Carson City and try our luck there. No, we won't. They need rain here in Virginia City, and I'm going to make it.
Last week he was charging two dollars a barrel, and that was steep. Well, Scott, since then we've had seven more days without rain, and there's always somebody trying to make money out of the misfortunes of others. It ain't right. No, but it's legal. Why don't you go up and buy a barrel before the price goes up again? I got 500 head of stock out there baking in the sun. A barrel wouldn't even get me started. Rainmaker. The vultures are beginning to circle. I don't know. I've heard some people make rain. I heard spunk water can remove warts. Did you ever try it? Never had warts. You've had a drought like this before. Come on, it won't cost us nothing to listen. Well, let's go find the mayor and strike a bargain. Strike a better bargain, let the mayor find you. What makes you think he's looking for us? You see the prices in the water wagon down the street? Yeah. He's looking. You know, Jamie, you put me in mind of a fellow I knew back in Big Springs. No education to speak of, but oh, my, he was smart. To hear him tell it, you'd think he knew more than any man living or dead. Yeah, what's he doing now? 20 years. Your name Garibaldi? That's what it says on the sign. But you can call me Doc. Well, uh, I'm Mayor Corey. What are you doing in Virginia City, Mr. Garibaldi? Well, we're just passing through. Stopped to water the horses. Is that a fact? Well, the troughs are all dry, and so most of the wells are out here. Oh, uh, that's a shame. You think so? I said so, didn't I? I guess you've come to fill them up for us. Yeah, all it takes is a little rain. Which you can supply, I suppose. You said that, neighbor. I didn't. As a matter of fact, we're on our way to Colton, Arizona, where they hadn't had a drop parade in three months. So we better be on our way. We promised them we'd be there by the end of the month. Just a minute, Doc. Well, minutes make hours, and hours make days, and waiting around here could make me late. Ah, uh, well, we'll only take about 30 minutes of your time, and uh, we'll see that you get some water for your horses. We've been without water here for over four months. Maybe we ought to have a little talk, huh? Talk, talk, or business talk? Business. All right. You got 30 minutes. We can talk in my office. You'd like us to believe that you can uh, make it rain in Virginia City, huh? No, I'm only telling you I can. You can believe what you want. Can you absolutely guarantee you can make it rain? Absolutely. Well, suppose we did believe you. And suppose we was to hire you to perform these services. Just uh, what do you suppose it would cost? Well... Since we're only supposing, I suppose it costs you about $5,000. $5,000? You expect us to pay you $5,000? I don't expect you to pay me a red cent. Where we're going, Colton, Arizona, $5,000 does not bother them any. They need rain, and they know I'll deliver, so they're waiting there with the money in their hands. Jamie? Uh, Mr. Garibaldi, um, Doc, it's just possible that $5,000 does not scare us much either. But we would have to know more if we were going to close the deal. Oh? Like what? Well, you could camp on some side hill until we get a natural rain, then come running to collect. Well, you tell me, when do you need the rain? Yesterday. You're wasting my time. We haven't said no yet. You haven't said yes, either. Let's go on down the road. Look, Doc, we don't get rain within two weeks. There won't be anything here worth saving. Two weeks, huh? Oh, I can do that. The sprinkles don't count. It's got to be a real rain. It's got to cover this whole area. Oh, 20 miles in all directions. It's got to be. I wouldn't want the rain to miss Ben Cartwright's place. 
You uh, say that like you know. Oh, I do. And Hollis and Joe. You a friend of theirs? We was in business together. Partners. Well, why didn't you say so? Martin, you go talk to your neighbors south of town. Right. Garrison, you talk to your neighbors on the north and east. I'll line up the local folks. Well, Doc, that puts it square up to you. Well, we gotta have a contract first. Just have everybody sign right here at the bottom. <laughs> well, we're all friends here. Well, a man can lose an awful lot of friends in a rainstorm. And then there's a the little matter of the advance. What advance? $200 to buy the chemicals and explosives. Chemicals? Explosives? Certainly. We got to blow away the existing weather conditions, frolic the atmosphere, and create a natural vacuum to be filled by the oncoming rain clouds. And that takes more than two sticks, a pinch of salt, and a loud sneeze. 200 out of city funds. It's mighty irregular. Here we stand, and down the road, there's folks waiting with money in their hands. Doc, wait a minute. Here's your advance. Well, thank you, Mayor. I'll be back for that contract tomorrow. What's all this about two hundred dollars? You told me all the chemicals we need wouldn't cost more than fifty. Yeah, that's for you. For me? Now hold on, boy. You're going to buy the lumber to build the tower. $150 worth? Yeah. Just how much tower are you figuring on building? 18 feet and two inches high and strong. High and strong, huh? Well, you've come to the right man for the job. Did I ever tell you about the bridge I built across No Bottom Canyon? Yeah, you told me. Now, this better work, or we're going to have an awful lot of sore citizens coming at us. Won't matter. They'll never see us. Why not? Be raining too hard. If you... Head one of these and fit me for head one of these dress up vests. How much would you ask for? Well, this is a dollar seventy-five, boss. A dollar seventy-five. Here, here we go. Yeah. Come on, come on. That thing's going sky high. That's not bad. Yeah. Seems a little tight. Well, I have to let it out a little. Yeah. Well, a dollar seventy-five. That's for this thing. Oh, hi. Hi, Jamie. Yeah. Go ahead and wait on the other man. Now you look like a boy with a nickel to spend. I bet you want some jelly beans. No. Licorice whips. Okay, I give up. What do you want? I need some buckets. Oh. Those are solid oak. They won't crack, they won't split, leak. They'll last a lifetime. Good, I'll take ten of them. Ten? Mm -hmm. That's going to cost you a lot of money. Oh, I've got a lot of money. And more coming. $4,800 more. You wouldn't want to buy this whole store, would you? <laughs> no. That's what I should have said ten years ago. Oh, you want ten... Uh, uh, buckets. And uh, was there anything else? Oh, yeah, a whole lot of things. Uh -huh. um, 20 gallons of turpentine. 20 gallons turps. 15 pounds of sulfur. 15 pounds of sulfur. Um, 20 pounds of soda. 20 pounds of soda. Um, yeah, blasting powder. Oh, that comes in 10 pound cakes. Good, I'll take five. 50 pounds? Mm hmm. Would you mind my asking, what do you want this stuff for? Atmospheric manipulation. Oh. I guess that explains this. <laughs> uh, what, was there anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. T uh, 20 pounds of salt. Oh, 20 pounds of salt. You have that? Yes, uh-huh. Yes, right there. Something big, like an oar, an oar, or an oar. Yeah. Well, I've got an oar. That... Oh, okay, I'll take that. that. Uh, okay. Cups. Okay, four cups. Uh, four cups. You hired a what? A rainmaker, Ben. Said he was a friend of yours, Dr. B. Barnaby Garibaldi, rainmaker. Never heard of him. See? I told you he was a phony. You did not. Well, wait a minute, fellas. There's no harm done, unless you've already paid him for the job. Not a chance. We were going to pay him when it rained. Except for the advance. The advance. How much? Uh, he said he needs some supplies. How much? Uh, chemicals, explosives, uh, $200. <laughs> All right, where is this miraculous rainmaker? Uh, last time I saw him, he was heading out of town. Towards the Ponderosa. Howdy, 
Howdy, Hoss. Oh, howdy, Dusty. It looks uh, looks like you two are going to stay around for a while. Oh, a couple weeks, more or less. Did you get everything? Got everything. <laughs> Not everything. Where's the grub? That comes to $84.23. Now, are you sure there isn't anything else? Yes. Well, we'll need lumber for the tower. Oh, I've That's got right. that. I've got that out back. Well, let's have a look. I've got all kinds of it. Right through here. Hey, uh, Jamie, explain. what. Tell me about that, that uh, manipulation. What is that in here? Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to make it rain. Oh, yeah. I'll see you, Jamie. Okay, bye. Uh, something wrong? Oh, no, 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 there ain't nothing wrong. Best luck, Jamie. Thank you. On the ground, just touching. Just like I said, 18 feet, 2 inches exactly. All right. Well, come on down. We got a lot more to do. One quart of iodine. Pounds of sulfur. Blasting powder! <laughs> We're in business with a bang. That's the way it's supposed to be. Ten gallons of turpentine. Ten gallons of turpentine? Twenty pounds of soda. Twenty right pounds there. of soda. That could mean trouble. Well, if it is, it's been a mighty short two weeks. You wait right here. I'll go talk to him. Howdy, neighbors. Howdy. Something wrong? Yeah, sure. Some piece of construction you got there. Yeah, and it had to be exactly the right size. Well, Ben, is he a friend of yours or any? Oh, yes, yes, I know him. What about the advance? Well, anybody's going to build a tower like that sure isn't fixing to run off somewhere. Well, since they're on your land, you can keep an eye on them. I think I'll be getting back to town. It's a comfort to know he's a friend of yours, and you'll vouch for him. I'll, uh, I'll see you back in town. you learn to build like this? Well, you know that trestle over Walnut Creek? Yeah. Well, I did six months carpentering on that trestle. Did you? Well, what's it for? And what about that? B. Barnaby Garibaldi, doctor of precipitate practices. Now, would you mind explaining to me where you got that rig and that new name? Why, sure, man. Jamie? Everything all right? Everything's fine. You can put the gun away now. Why don't you kick up the fire there and put the coffee pot back on? Holler when it's hot. Is he a relative of yours? No, he's a stray like me. We kind of got together by accident. Huh? I was coming back from Montana, coming over a high pass, and I found this wagon in a ditch. Jamie was trying to get it out, and Tom Hunter, that's... Jamie's daddy was down sick in the back end of the wagon and wrapped up in a blanket, freezing one minute and burning up the next. Yeah. Well, I didn't know Tom Hunter very long, but he was one of the best. And he knew he was dying, too, but not a whimper out of him. He was just worried about the boy, and he asked me if I'd take care of him and kind of see that he got a fair share of education. <laughs> Told him I wasn't the man for that job, but he insisted... And you promised to do it. Yeah. But like I said, he was one of the best. Coffee's ready. Be right there. Got a responsibility to take out. Oh, it ain't been too bad so far. Oh, 
probably strong enough to float a bullet, but that's the way my pa liked it. Oh, yes, it's strong, all right. You old enough to drink coffee? I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'm old enough to drink coffee. I'm old enough to take care of him, too. Now, well, just a minute. You're might confused, aren't you? Taking care of you, remember? Well, I might have might confused. Now, you're Dusty Rhodes, and you're Jamie Hunter. Who's this Dr. Garibaldi? Nobody really. The name just kind of goes along with the wagon and the boat. Then Dusty's a bad name for a rainmaker. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Now, what makes you so all fire certain that you can make rain? I'm not sure, but he is. It's all in the book, Mr. Cartwright. My pa wrote it all down, step by step. Well, son, I, I sure don't mean to be disrespectful to your father. I just don't believe that it's possible to shape or twist nature to make it do whatever you want it to. I'm sure you can. You can dam up a stream and water a field. You can plow up the ground and spread fertilizer around and plant corn where nature's growing nothing but weeds and wildflowers. Well, of course, you can do that in the ground, but you can't make rain out of the sky. No, no more than you can make corn out of the ground. But you can plow the ground and plant the seed. Jimmy, this is not a game. This is serious, dangerous business. Look around you. It's tinted dry as far as the eye can see. We haven't had rain here in four months. And people are upset. Now, they can't take their frustrations out against nature. But if someone like you comes along, you say you're going to make rain, they believe you. And then you cannot make rain. They can sure take it out on you. We get hired, Mr. Cartwright. We're gonna make rain. Thanks for the coffee. You shouldn't have talked to him like that. He's much as said my pa was a liar. Now, hold on, boy. He said there's some things a man can't change, and the weather might just possibly be one of them. My pa was right, and I'm gonna prove it. Oh, well, now, listen, Jamie. You gonna try to talk me out of it, too? It'd be a waste of my breath. That's right. But I'll tell you something. If you don't start being a little nicer to people, I'm gonna turn you over my knee. And another thing, it's about time you start to learn a little yes, sir, and no, sir, and thank you very much, sir. You think so? I know so. All right. What? I said all right. All right what? I'll be very honest, Corey. I don't think there's a man alive who can make rain. It's not a happy thought, then. No, it sure isn't. We've got to let him try, then. Things are desperate now. Getting worse by the minute. Not so bad for you, man. You've got a whole lake full of water. Yes, and no grass. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a little of either, and I'm willing to try anything. All right, but don't get your hopes up too high. Well, you're the one who vouched for them. I didn't vouch for their ability to make rain. Well, if it don't rain, you were right. If it does, you get the benefit without paying. Gentlemen, if it rains within the next two weeks, I'll be more than happy to pay my share. Number one! 
those chemicals. What's going on here? We're preparing to sow the seeds, Ben. for one minute. Well, what are you doing all this? Why don't you just stop it before it goes any further? Well, I don't know how we can do that, short of tying him in the back of the wagon and riding him out of the country. Look, I got a book here that a friend of mine gave me in town. It's all about frauds and confidence games, and there's a whole chapter here about rainmakers. Now, we can prove to him that he cannot make rain. It won't make a bit of difference. Well, we can prove it. Ben, all you've got is a book that says he can't. He's got a book that says he can. Now, just what have we proved? Dusty, this book was written by an authority. And his book's written by his Paul. Well, his Paul was wrong. But Ben, he's heard all that. He's heard his dad called a charlatan, a fraud, a scoundrel. He's seen him run off and chased away. Why, he's even seen him tarred and feathered and ridden out of town on a rail. Well, then he knows that it's dangerous. <sighs> Better than either one of us. That's what killed his daddy. You saw all this? Yeah. They worked Jamie over with the Willis switch while they were at it. When his paw died, Jamie latched onto that book and set out to make it rain with a vengeance. I guess he's trying to prove to the whole world that those people were wrong and his daddy was right. Hi, Jimmy. What are you doing here? Well, I, uh... I just, uh, came out of the hell. Why? You don't believe in anything I'm doing. It's just that we have different opinions, Jamie. I know we do. Why do you want to help? Well, they asked me in town to come out of here and keep an eye on you. And, well, as long as I'm out here, I might as well help. Well, as long as you're here. Come yeah, on, Dusty. We got lots of work to do. We're wasting time. Remind me to teach him how to say please. With a rain cloud, I wouldn't come anywhere near that noise. I said I'd pay my share, but I'm beginning to wonder. You know, I've seen that Doc Garibaldi someplace before, but I don't remember him being partners with the car, right? He said he was. What do you figure he's doing up there anyway? Wasting our time and our money. You finished eating? Yeah. You never even touched it. I wasn't very hungry. Jamie, the ink on that page isn't going to fade. It's still going to be there in 20 minutes. Now you eat. Howdy, Jamie, Dusty. Howdy, Oz. What brings you way out here? Oh, I thought I'd just sort of come out and jaw with you fellas. How well, about a cup of coffee? Hey, that sounds good. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you'd invite. Hey, uh, Jamie. Do you sure enough believe for real that you can make it rain? Darn right I can. I mean, it's all right here in the book. Yeah? Hey, uh, read me some of that, huh? Here you go. What you got there, Hoss? Huh? Oh, this? It's, uh, what is it? It's an umbrella. I, I, uh, I bring it out to Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Read me, boy. Read me. <laughs> all right. Clouds must be the rainmaker. Playing with gunpowder and cooking up stinks that would shame a skunk. He said two weeks and it ain't been but 13 days. And I got water holes full of dust and cattle dying. It ain't real thunder. Rain's what he promised. We better get it by tomorrow. Or that Garibaldi's gonna phase with it by lightning. Nine. Here's the soda. That's ordinary soda. You use that in a rainmaking mixture? Mm-hmm. Use salt too. And sulfur and turpentine and 
things people keep in their pantry shelf. If it ain't what's in it, it's know how to use it. We'll take it up to the tower, Dusty. There's a lot of stars up there. The clouds will come. You'd be surprised how fast they pile up once they start. Well, I'll tell you, if the rain doesn't come. I still got the rest of the night and all day tomorrow. It's gonna rain, Mr. Cartwright. If it ain't cloud up come morning, I still have pause emergency page. His what? His emergency page. Getting the air ready takes two weeks sometimes. If it ain't reading by then, you can just double the batches. Or if every time Pa uses it. Well, I better get to the tower. I'm wide awake. So am I. Well, if neither one of us can sleep, I'll keep you company. I used to sit up on the tower with Pa and watch him work. Sometimes I'd go to sleep. Next morning, I'd wake up in the back of the wagon. Didn't even remember him picking me up and moving me. He was a genius, you know. He really could make it rain. People just didn't understand. They thought he was trying to cheat him or something. It's what you think, isn't it? Uh, I'm willing to be shown. Well, I'm going to show you. My pa was a genius, and I'm going to prove it. No need for both of us to be up here. That's right. One of us could be getting some sleep. That's right. But you call me as soon as it gets light. Crack a dog. Yeah, we are. I've done it before. 
Pa used to wake me up. For a minute, I thought you were Pa. I, I was dreaming about Grass Flat. I, I, could, I could smell the tar boiling. And they were coming at us from every place. And tar and feathers. That's what they did to my Pa. You better get some rest now. Tomorrow's a big day, Jamie. I'll go tend to things. You try to get some rest, Jamie. There were, there were rain making jobs after Grass Flat. We'd just get started. The drunks would come and call my pa a fool and a cheat. And, and lots worse. We'd run. My pa was sick and shaking. And, and we just couldn't wait for the air was ready. And, well, I ain't running. Of course you're not. Now, come on, lie down. I ain't running. Come morning, I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to double the badges, and I'm going to show everybody that my pa knew how to make it rain. Of course you will. Come on, I'll lie down. Come morning. You'll see. Come morning. Breakfast, two bites for dinner. That boy makes a sparrow look like a hearty eater. He's worried. He's not alone. I never was a believer, but I admit I did a lot of hoping. you're thinking. What if you do? You know, I wish it was raining. Thanks. It's only four o'clock. I, I got till midnight. You got eight hours. enough time for three batches, but I ain't got enough stuff to make even one. What do you need? Soda, turpentine. We've got some of the Ponderosa. I'll get some for you. Why? You, you don't believe I can make it rain? I'll try to be back by dark, maybe a little after. Where's the rain? We've been trying, day and night. It ain't midnight yet, I have. You shut your mouth, boy. Dr. Garibaldi, huh? I finally remember where I seen you before. You was partners with Hoss and Joe in that livery stable deal. Yeah, we was learning the business from the ground up. Got a wise mouth. But he ain't no doctor, and his name ain't Garibaldi. 
I never said it was. That's what you led us to believe. It's the same thing. You already stole 200. You was hoping to steal a lot more. Yeah. Now we're going to fix it so you don't do that to nobody again. Start wrecking it, boys. Now, hold on here. You got no right to... What's that, Doc? You let him alone. I'm the Rainmaker. Well, look who's talking. Is your name Garibaldi? No, but I'm the Rainmaker. You're a half pint of nothing, boy. You better find yourself a hole and hide. You want to get walked on. Stay out of this, Jamie. Get moving, boys. Wait! It's all in here. My pa wrote it all down. He was a Rainmaker. He taught me. What are you talking about, boy? It, it, my pa knew what he was talking about. He wrote it all down in the book. Let me see that. Give me my foot. Hey, you, give me my... Hold it. Now, give that boy's book. And then clear out of here, all of you. You heard me? Now, give that boy's book. And then clear out. Give me my foot. Give me my foot. Give me... folks that hired us to make rain. Scott was one, and Garrison. I'm sorry, Jamie. Just a bunch of burnt pages. What's to be sorry about? Jamie, I'm going to take you home. My home's in that wagon, Mr. Cartwright. Besides, I can't leave Dusty. Oh, Dusty will come along with us. I didn't run. I said I wouldn't run, and I didn't. No, you didn't run. I didn't cry. I'm too big to cry. That's right. You're too big to cry. Two minutes to ten. And two hours ahead of when we call us. battery, destruction of property. There's enough here to keep a court busy for a solid month. Jamie, I guess you're not going to be able to leave as soon as you thought. Anyway, there's not too much work for a rainmaker these days. And with a muddy road, it's not going to be easy to travel. 
I'm used to bad roads. Well, you gotta stick around till the uh, wagon is fixed. We're gonna take care of your wagon for you. Wheels, axle paint, be as good as new. Or better. New sign, too. What about my pa's book? I guess you can't put that back together again, can you? No way we can. But we're mighty sorry about it. Save you the trouble of having to tell us what happened. Might as well get on with it. We hired ourselves a rain maker. Rain in two weeks, so we don't have to pay for it. Night before last, rain started at 10 o'clock, two hours before the time ran out. We ain't denying the rain, but we sure didn't hire a boy to make it. You hired Dusty and me and my pa's book. We did get rain, and it did come just before the contract time ran out. For them is one to argue. I got documents here charging trespass, assault and battery, destruction of property, and sundry other crimes. Seven pages. Well, we did make a mistake. We're willing to set it straight. Pay for the rain, too, just like we agreed. And Jenny, it's up to you. They gotta say my pa made it rain. I just did what he put in the book. Pa made it rain. Your pa made it rain, son. And we're willing to put it in right. <sighs> Mr. Cartwright's already paid for his share of the rain. And as soon as the rest of us do likewise, we can forget about the warrants and charges. <laughs> Be a while before you can leave. Gotta get that wagon fixed up and get all the money collected. Uh, Dusty's gonna work with us in the Ponderosa. You're uh, welcome to stay just as long as you'd like. Well, not much I'm taking favors, but well, I could stay for a while if I could pay for board. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll find you a bunch of chores to make it come out even, huh? All right. Hey, let's just be able to clear up. smoke had clear we stuck with each other spilled blood at Chickamauga and the cannons roared that day but it bound us together to ride thinking ways we were blood brothers and we're blood brothers all Blood brothers, don't let me fall. Now in the days to come, my blood brother learned that he could never work without sharing what he earned. He always had his moment, and I had songs to sing. Playing all our music For the love that women bring We were blood brothers And we're blood brothers all Freight wagon coming Twisted his ankle pretty bad. 
All right. Hop in the back. Thank you. Nice man here off of this ride. Oh, come on, Tiggy. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Nice to you. You'll be okay? Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll make it. All right. Get on. Get on. Get on. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, gentlemen. All right, you aboard? Yep. yep. All right, let's go. <laughs> Just be a minute. Hey, listen, Joe. Yeah. Uh, don't look around. Just look like we're saying hello and how are you. Uh, how's everything at the ranch, Marcus? Oh, fair to fiddling, Joe. M3 on the tailgate. They're weary willies. I want you to help me tie them up so I can take them into the sheriff. Well, just because they wear raggedy old uniforms and keep on the move don't necessarily mean... Hey, Dusty. They... You know, when I was in Carson City, I remember I looked at a wanted poster. I don't know what it is the guy did, but it seems to me they said he was a weary will. Was there a picture of him? Yeah. yeah I think I could recognize him. Wouldn't hurt to take a look. I'll tell you. Hold it! Hold it! You just said it. I said I saw a poster. I didn't say they were on it. They ran, didn't they? Look, I'd run, too, if you pulled a gun on me. You're going to be sorry. You wait and see. Worry willies are like a swarm of locusts. Why, well, there's one... Soon there'll be a hundred. You mock my word. Looks like a nice place for a permanent camp. I made a temporary permanent camp. Now you like it so much, why don't you go blaze a trail? I would, Billy, but this ankle's giving me fits. It must have been all that running. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. He's coming. Hey, they were the ones on the buckboard. You better start limping, Pellerman. My name's Joe Cartwright. This is our foreman, Dusty. That's right, Joseph. We're the ones who are on that wagon. And the reason we jumped off and hit out for the woods is... No need to explain. First off, I'm sorry Marcus shot at you. What's second off? Second off, I'm glad he's a bad shot. <laughs> Third, you're welcome to stay a while. How long a while? Well, just how long do you have in mind? Well, my friend Pellerman here twisted his ankle pretty bad. She would like to give it a good rest. My friend Krulak, well... He thinks we ought to settle down and get jobs. No ranch worker. I'm no good on a horse. They might be hired at one of the mines. Yeah, I'll bet that pays good money. We ought to check into that tomorrow. I'll tell you what, we're going to be in town this evening. We'll ask around. Oh, no, no. No need to put yourself out. Oh, I'm glad to help. Good luck to you. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Take it easy with the ankle. I wish I had a chunk of butter to see if it melt in your mouth. Yeah, well, you know what I'd like? I'd like to see you putting in 10 hours a day in a mine. Oh, there's nothing I'd like better. As soon as this ankle heals. <laughs> yeah, you better take it easy on the jig in there. And you know what I'd like? I'd like to stay put for a while. Why don't we? Looks to me like we just found the right spot. Well, howdy. Morning, Dad. 
Got a list here, and uh, you can take your time in filling it. No hurry. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna have to order some of this. Uh, can I help you, Jamie? Uh, I can't afford it. <laughs> Jamie, I just paid you a week's wages for doing the chores. Well, I know, but... Well, I like to kind of keep it in one piece for a while. <laughs> hey, Major, I met three fellows this morning. They were looking for work. I wonder if you had anything for them. Well, I could use one of them, but uh, just temporary. Well, I think it'll be all right. They're drifters just passing through. Weary willies. No weary willies for me. I don't want them in my store. They're all alike, troublemakers. I haven't heard of any trouble they've caused. They're scum, every one of them. I had my fill of them during the war. They were a disgrace to the uniform then. They haven't earned enough sense to buy a new suit of clothes. They're all crackpots in one way or another. I had a pound of jelly beans in that order, wouldn't it? Thank you. like somebody found a good place. Hey! Hey, let me help you with that. So far from here? No, maybe a half a mile. Oh, hallelujah, I'm about ready to drop. You don't happen to have any sugar, do you? Yeah, some. About half a pound. Well, it's my turn to say hallelujah. <laughs> hey, what is it, a barn? No, just a field. There are woods to keep the wind off. <sighs> Sounds like a real nice place. Well, we got permission to stay. We're going into town for a while if you want to come along. Well, maybe I'd like to dip my hands and splash my face and just sit for a while. Well, uh, just a minute, Mills. Mills, let me take care. Woman, well, pretty's used for looking at, not for lifting things. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Miss. You own this store? My father does. He lets me close up sometimes if he's busy. No, I just made up my mind. I'm going to give you all my business. Now, you're making fun of me. Say a little. You mind? <laughs> no. I guess it doesn't do any harm. Well, then maybe I'll see you again. Uh, I'm here every day. What was that about? Well, it was about a pretty girl in a grocery store, Pellerman. Man's got to keep his eye on the future. Those fellas bothering you, Angie? No. As a matter of fact, they weren't. Well, I just thought I'd walk you home. Thank you. But I can find the way. They've got green poker tables at the Silver Dollar Saloon. Watered down whiskey on a hot afternoon. I'm a castaway stranger with a dollar or two. Guess you can tell that I'm just passing like a bird, Donnie. Smile at that barmaid, Lord, but she just don't care. Her starts to the store bought boyfriend Tells me not to stare And I've got no silver dollars To tip her when I'm through Guess she can tell that I'm just passing through Then we have a law against vagrants? She don't Beggars? We'll have two beers. Right. And one for our friend there. That'll be 25 cents. A piece. Price of beer's going up. In advance. Hey, that song's got to be worth something. Now look, mister, I can't buy a new keg of beer with that song. Now you fellas either shove out or get out. Just relax and enjoy the music. Boy sings like a bird, don't he? You heard me. Now you fellas either walk out of here or else get thrown out. 
And if you need any help, I'll take care of that songbird. You touch him and I'll... I'll tell you what you'll do, Mr. Lee. You'll get out of here. I mean both of you right now. I'd rather run. Yes, I'd rather be a man. Just really? passing through. No, 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 no applause, please. On well, the friendly feeling in the room is sufficient reward. Good night. Hey. Hey, are you boys later? No, we thought we might. You still looking for work? Oh, yeah, sure. I talked to the foreman at the Silver King Mine. He's looking for men. Just bringing this note to take care of. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. See take care. You fellas ready for that drink? Yeah, we're kind of down on our luck tonight. That's all right. You got rich friends. You got enough for a couple of rounds. Well, not this saloon. What's wrong with it? I, mean, I hope you don't think I'm being snobbish, but the people that frequent this place are rather low element, if you know what I mean. Hey, Gusty. What? Uh, Two fellas are just joined them. It's the guy on the poster in Carson City. Hey, uh... Let's go talk to the sheriff. Mr. Cartwright, what's a weary willy? Well, Jimmy, uh, it's a man who goes from one place to another looking for himself. Doesn't know where he is? No. Doesn't know who he is. Or why he's here. Or even what he's looking for. Oh, you mean like someone who doesn't know what he wants to be when he grows up? Something like that. See, a man goes away to war, and he lives every minute in danger. And misery and mud and and he comes back and he's changed and he can't figure out why the rest of the world hasn't changed as much as he has so he goes looking Mr. Cartwright, Joe's back oh, good yes, he must have got word from the sheriff in Carson City huh? yeah, he was the one, all right we got a telegram from Carson City what they picking up for? Well, he was wanted for robbery and murder. Uh, lynch mobs started to gather, and he managed to get away. And about two days later, they found out they had the wrong man. <laughs> I guess he just looked guilty. What kind of look is that? Different, Jamie. He looked different, so they figured he had to be guilty. <laughs> I bet you got coffee, too. Yes. And sugar, and salt, and canned beans, too. All that, too. Yeah. And you got just what I need. <laughs> but I ain't got no money. I'm sorry. We don't give credit to strangers. Uh, don't be sorry. I don't believe in credit, neither. Now, I did notice that your back fence needs painting. And I can chop wood and sweep out the store. Any work you need done, I can do it. Well, hey, you play the guitar? No, I don't. Well, how'd you like to learn? I mean, you'd be surprised how fast you could learn to play the guitar. 
I tell you what, you give me five dollars worth of stuff, I'll give you ten lessons. How's that? Get out of here before you say one more word or I'll call the sheriff. Huh? You don't need the sheriff. You stay out of this, Edward. Come on, you. Come on. Come on. Hey, Edward, now. You don't want to get your hands dirty. Edward. I'm awful sorry. Teach you the guitar anyway. I don't see any. What is it? I'm sure I'm not sure. They said we could stay, didn't they? Yeah. Come on, keep working. You Mr. Van Cartwright? Howdy. Well, I hope you won't mind a few of our friends joining us. Please don't make them leave, Mr. Cartwright. What are you doing here, Angie? I came here to help them. They're good people. And my friends who came with me feel the same way I do. It's very commendable. Don't you think this is going just a little too far? Chopping down trees without asking permission? A yeah, wood stick as this, you don't thin out the trees, they'll all die. Well, I'm grateful for that information. And I see your building here. Oh, well, just a shelter. We'll take it down when we go, leave the place like it was when we got here. Sir, the way I see it, this clearing's no good to you anyway. My point of my life is catching sight of that stack of rocks back there on the road. <laughs> we haven't seen a friendly face in over a month. My regards. Hope you have some tea. My wife's expecting, and the coffee don't set well. Didn't you bring tea, Angie? Yes, and the kettle's already simmering. It won't take just a minute to bring it to a boil. Oh, oh well, thank you. How soon are you do? Well, I reckon by the next morning. You gotta admit, they sure are a friendly bunch. The problem is, you gotta stop it somewhere. You can't just let them keep coming in, they'll be swarming all over the ranch. I know. Well. All right, I'll tell you what. You can build your shelter. And anyone who's here now can stay. But uh, that, uh, that stack of rocks out there in the road, that's gotta go. All right? For building a shelter big enough for a lot more, seems a shame not to get the most juice out of it. Sorry, but that's my out. What if people just happen to wander in? Then I guess they'll just have to wander out again. Oh, and uh, no trouble. If there's any trouble, either here or in town, the lease is canceled. Won't be any trouble, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I hope not. Now, what about these fellas here? Anybody here have any... Special skills of any kind? Sure, most of us have trades. Yeah, I work with leather, you know, vests and belts, saddlebags. I'm a silversmith. Would you like to place an order for some silver spurs? It does beautiful work. <laughs> There's one step you forgot, the first one. Where's he going to get leather for the vests? Well, we uh, ain't got that one worked out yet, but once we... I hope it's not too strong, Carolyn. Ah, oh, it looks just right. Angie! Huh? Don't you dare make a scene. Now you get in that buggy and go home. We'll talk later. Now listen, Pa. You told him, didn't you? You saw me get in the buggy. You followed me here. Oh, no, Angie. Oh, yes, you did. I said we'd talk later. I'd rather talk now. I'm not a child, Pa. And you ought to have more sense than take away riffraff like that. Hey, hut! My apologies, Major. I'll have them all shot at sunrise. Unless you file charges of trespassing, I'm going to take action. Nobody's trespassing. They have my permission to stay here. Very well, then. I'll take it up with the sheriff. Take what up? They haven't done anything. 
What about these groceries here? Take it from my store. Did you buy them? You saying I stole them? I'm saying you coerced my daughter into stealing them for you. That isn't true. In the case of a minor, any undue pressure. There wasn't any. We'll let the judge decide that. Now you get in that buggy. I'm not ready to leave yet, Pa. Angie, here we go. I think you're better, Angie. All right. Whatever the cost, put it on my bill. No. No, they'll pay for it. Or else. Hey, Pa, you know, uh, well, Billy's gonna start working for us tomorrow anyway. Why don't you just give him an advance on his wages? Huh? What do they owe you? Hey, man, you better take that gun off your face. I want to see you at my house early tomorrow morning. Too. Mr. Horse eat enough, make Cook feel like effort is not wasted. Mm. Very good food, Humphrey. Besides, I gotta keep my strength up. I still got a lot of work to do up there at Seminole Canyon. Thank you. Thank you very much. How's that job gonna take? Mm. Probably a couple more days. You feeling all right, Joe? Yeah, I'll tell you what I was thinking about it. I was looking at all this food and just wondering if those people out in the woods had enough to eat. A lot of people in this world are hungry. Some are hungry because they can't work, and we should help them. Others are hungry because they can't find a job, and still others are hungry because they won't work. If they get hungry enough, they'll do something about it. If a man spends all his time working, he don't have any time to think. Where'd you hear that, Jamie? That's what Mr. Pellerman said. And where did you meet Mr. Pellerman? Th this morning at the camp on the way to school. Camp's not on the way to school. Well, I, I sort of went a little out of my way. But you did get to school on time. Well, I got to talking to Mr. Krulak when I let him have my silver dollar. You gave, you gave Krulak your silver dollar? No, sir, I'm just letting him use it. You see, he's gonna make me a concho for my belt. doing with that steer? Just looking him over, Mr. Cartwright. No need to put him on the ground to look him over. There's a reason for that, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright, Angie, trying to... Angie. Not supposed to be any more cattle in this section. What's he doing here? You better ask him that. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Billy. You were supposed to report to my house for work this morning. Well, something came up, I couldn't make it. Something more important than the bargain we made? That steer. He's stuck in that bog back there up to his neck. I don't see any mud on him. That's because we washed him off to see what was wrong with him. You sure got an answer for everything, don't you? Well, Malarkey's music, I'd be a brass band. All right, let him up. See, he broke his leg trying to get out of that bog. Yeah. Billy. Take Jamie and Andrew over there. Come on, now. You know there's nothing you can do for. Hey, Jamie! Hey, I got something for you. Beautiful, Mr. Krulak. I have to admit, it's not half bad. How'd you do it? Just takes the right kind of tools and a little work. 
Can you show me how? Sure. You get another silver dollar, and I'll make a better buckle for that belt. You look, Mr. Cartwright. It's very good. Navajo taught me. There wasn't anything that man couldn't do with a piece of silver. Billy. No need letting all that meat go to waste. I'm sure you can use it. Well, we can use it all. We can use the meat and the hide, the bones, even the hooves. I'm sorry about that wrong conclusion I jumped to. Well, that's all right. We're used to it. There's sometimes you just ask for it. All right, Jamie, I'll drop you off at school on the way to town. Thanks, Mr. Clyde. Now? I'd like to, Palamon, but it's my ankles giving me fits. Oh, well. That's all right. Krulak can help me. Come on. There's nothing wrong with your ankle. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, Angie, I saw a lot of death when I was in the Army, but somehow I just never got used to being around it. If we sow the seeds of doubt deep down in our minds, They'll ramble and tangle till we strangle each other like vines Like it's already grown wild From Boston to Atlanta, Georgia And it won't be very long until it's over Sometimes I doubt and my mind begins to wonder If fighting for a woman will make me feel I'm stronger but I believe that loving her is better than dying for her. No, it won't be very long until it's over. What'd you do in the army? Well, did an awful lot of walking. And did some camping out, and then did a lot more walking. And then one day, a whole bunch of us fellers ran up the hill, shooting off our guns and yelling. And the fellers on the top of the hill started shooting off their guns and yelling, so we ran back down the hill again. But there was an officer down there, and he started yelling, shooting off his gun. So we run back up the hill, and then we run down the hill, and we run up the hill, and down the hill, and up and down, and... Wasn't anybody left to run no more. And then somebody said, well... We didn't want that old hill anyway. That's when I lit out for the brush, and I guess they went looking for the hill they wanted. That's why you joined the Weary Willies? Well, you can't join the Weary Willies, because all of them are unjoined. Uh, we're just together because we understand each other. Angie? What do you suppose could satisfy the soul except to walk free and know no superior? That's Walt Whitman. Is that what you want to do the rest of your life? Walk free? I ain't going to run up no more hills nobody wants. Aren't there any hills you want to climb? What if I were on top of one of those hills? Well, I'd wave to you as I pass by. I'd probably miss you when you were behind me.
What you don't have enough sense to do. Come on. Hey, Willie! Let's go! You help me! I don't want to see you hurt. He wasn't hurting me. I liked it. I like him. I don't like you. We're not through with you yet, mister. Let him go. Billy, please. Let him go, Pelleman. You all right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ben, you seen Angie? No, not since this morning. She was out at the Willie's camp. Going out that way? I was just leaving. All right, along with you. All right. It's your daughter, Major. Mm -hmm. My wife and I were driving out of town. We came across this empty buggy right alongside there where they, where they had that camp. And we heard some sounds in the woods like, like it was somebody crying. She says something about a, some man pulling her into the woods. Get the doctor, please. Yeah. Angie. Angie, it's me, Paul. Can you hear me, Angie? Major, don't try to make a talk now. You're responsible for this. Letting them Willie stay at your ranch. We don't know that one of them did it. We're gonna get a posse together and find the man who did it. I got a pretty good idea where to start looking. How many of them worry Willis or Arch on them? Who knows? They just keep on coming. Sheriff should have taken a bigger posse. Yeah. Maybe we better go along and give him a hand. there, fellas. How you doing? This is about the best barbecued beef I've ever had. Could have had a touch too much salt. Wondrous thing being kicked from inside. <laughs> Folks, I know you're all wondering what we're doing here, and if you give me a minute, I'll tell you. First off, you are not under arrest, but we are taking you into town for your own protection. I didn't do it. Marty, you and Ed check those tents for weapons and make sure we don't leave anybody behind. Now, wait a minute. Suppose we don't want to go. Yeah. yeah. Then we just take you, that's all. Boys, help them load up in the wagons, will you please? Mr. Cartwright, what's this all about? Willie, really, Angie Coulter was... Somebody assaulted my daughter. Was she hurt? Yes. Yes, she was hurt. Come on, let's go. Hey, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with that, do you? Billy, nobody says you had anything to do with it or anybody else here, but I think it's best you come along with us. A lot of angry people in town, and they got their eye on all of you.
one they met. Hey, Willie! Hey, Willie! Oh, now, take it easy, boy. There ain't no more Willies left. <laughs> I left the camp early to get home before dark. When I got to Fern Creek, where the road narrows, there was a big branch across the road. I got out of the buggy and started to move the branch. Someone grabbed me from behind, dragged me into <laughs> woods. Do you remember what the man was wearing? Did you see that? Did he say anything? Could you remember his voice? No, he was behind me. And he had his hand over my mouth. Last thing I remember is digging my nails into his head and trying to make him let go. Marcus and the others are in jail. How's Angie? She's been as well as can be expected, I guess. Those blankets that have been torn up and everything around here that's been smashed up and all been replaced, Billy. You're welcome to stay on. Oh, no. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. 
Well, maybe you'll change your mind. Sir, I don't think so. Billy, do you think it's going to be any different in the next town? Or the next? I don't know, but I just keep on hoping. What? People will... will change. Oh, no, stop being selfish and greedy and suspicious and violent. And be what? Like you. Is that what you want? A world full of people like you. That'd be so bad. No. The world just can't stop. Just can't sit under a tree in the shade and dream about the future. You, you have to make the future. You may not be me, Mr. Cartwright, because I don't like this world. Then change it. Don't withdraw from it, Billy. Become part of it. Make it better. Tell me, why should I? Because it's the only world you've got. Stuck with each other, spilled blood at Chickamauga, and the cannon roared that day. But it bound us together to right thinking ways. We were blood brothers, and we're blood brothers
You ought to get some padding on those benches, Buchanan. Go help Kite unhitch the team. Jace, take Queen and go get some firewood. All right, that's enough. I'm sorry. I... Sorry! You don't know the meaning of the word sorry. That's the only prisoner I've ever lost. And before we get the gallows pass, I'm going to teach you what sorry means. Now hitch up that team. So Quinn's the first prisoner you ever lost, have you, Dan? Since when did you stop counting Emmett Ames? Ten years is a long time, but there's still a lot of folks who remember how you... Why don't you shut up and get in the wagon?
in front. He's being nice to you. He could put you inside. She'll learn to take orders where she's going. There, it makes no difference. Man, woman, or child, they just count noses. So get up there. Well, you left nothing here, Madge, to come back for. So do your time and keep going. Don't worry, Sheriff. Tell Mr. Farrell I wouldn't cross the street to spit on him. Even if he was on fire. Let's go, Kate. Jump. Gets back, take some of this load off me. What load are you referring to? What do you think this is? Chicken feathers? No, 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 sir. I just a figure of speech. I meant us. Yeah, let me get that for you. Like you put in a good morning's work. How about a beer, huh? Yeah, good idea. Beer and a steak. Steak sounds good. Yeah, listen, got the money? The, the money? Well, it's your idea. It's your treat, isn't it? But don't, don't you think steak's a little heavy this early in the day? Maybe, maybe eggs would be good. Yeah, eggs. Good, good idea. Eggs and steak. Eggs, oh. Eggs and steak. How about the, uh... I'll just make it. when he comes to. is expecting three prisoners. Now, he doesn't look at faces and he doesn't read descriptions. He just counts noses. He's expecting three prisoners and that's what he's gonna get.
you, Joe. That was as good a steak as I've eaten in a long time. Now, the first one or the second one? I know where a horse gets his appetite. I think you could eat him under the table. Oh, today I could. The price was right. <laughs> now you're telling me. Let's get out of here before you get hungry. <laughs> Big Brother's horse over there. Looks like it. Hey, mister. Where'd you get that horse? I told that rain. What do we do with my son's horse? prison wagon. Prison wagon? That's right. You're on your way to the territorial state prison at Gallows Pass to serve five years for manslaughter in the place of a slicker named Quinn. slaughter in the Stone River Court and sentenced to five years at the Gallows Pass Prison. That's where I'm taking you. And when I deliver you to the warden, he pays me $100, no questions asked. All he expects is a body, and that's what he's getting. Well, I know what you're thinking. That you'll just tell the warden who you are and walk away with well, you're wrong there, too. The territory pays the warden $50 a month to keep Fred Quinn locked up. And that's all you'll mean to him. Fifty dollars a month, six hundred a year, three thousand for five years. No more, no less. I suppose you get back in that way. You must need a hundred bucks awfully bad. Maybe you'd rather ride back here. Maybe I would. Put her in a box, Kite. That's the gospel. The horse was just roaming loose. I still say you're a liar. I'm telling you the truth. Just how far west of Yucca Wells did you find this horse, Mr. Johnson? Ten or fifteen miles. Joseph, let's head out Yucca Wells where you see if you can find any trace of horse. Keep him left, Captain. Don't you worry about that. Well, if Mr. Johnson happens to remember anything that he hasn't told us, telegraph us care of the sheriff at Yucca Wells. We'll be there by tomorrow night. I'll do it, Ben. The way I 
here at Gallows Pass is the home office of hell. Keep your mouth shut and do as you're told. That's the only way that a man can make sure he won't leave in a box. And that goes for the ladies, too. I'm just telling you this so you'll understand why I won't be speaking up for you when we get there, Mr. Glenn. It's every man for himself at Gallows Pass, dog eat dog. Buchanan, who's he work for? Himself. But you're not here because Buchanan doesn't want to lose a hundred dollars. Did you ever hear of a man named Emmett Ames? I reckon everybody's heard of the Ames game. That's right. <laughs> well, Buchanan's the one who lost him just the day before he was going to hang him and out to dry. So? Uh, so it didn't figure. Buchanan was sheriff of Piute County. He was a big man. He was an important man. He was the best lawman in the territory at that time. But after Emmett escaped, people began saying how, well, he couldn't have done it without help. You got him, Joe. For big money. Not that there was anything anybody could prove. Just talk. <laughs> yeah. But it killed Buchanan as a lawman. Yeah, even after the talk died down, this is the best he could do. He'd been waiting a long time for the people to forget. What's all this to me? This is Buchanan's last trip. He's up for appointment for deputy U.S. Marshal when he gets back. And if he was to show up minus Fred Quinn, well, it might stir up all that old talk about him and Ames, but there'd go that Marshal job. <laughs> and he wants that mighty bad. Oh, you're worth a lot more than $100 to him. A lot more. There's a water hole down the next draw. We'll make camp there. Why are they taking you to Gallows Pass? Murder. I shot a payroll messenger up in Loon County. I got away with nearly fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> One of the payroll messenger didn't die soon enough, but the posse caught up with me washing out a pair of long johns in the creek a few miles down the road. How come you didn't get the rope? I would have, except I buried the payroll, and I didn't tell where, and I still haven't. The judge gave me life. I guess the warden at Gallows Pass has got orders to make it so rough on me. I'll just talk to her later. You don't seem very worried. Well, honey, the way I look at it, the only time to start worrying is when you stop breathing. Until then, anything can happen. <laughs> Who knows? I may never even get the gallon pass. <sighs> me neither. He's gonna have to kill me to get me there. know when they get here. Son Joseph. How are you? Price Buchanan's mine. Mr. Buchanan, I notice you're heading west. Did you happen to come through Yucca Wells? Picked up a prisoner there yesterday. Why? Well, looking for my son, Hoss. Yesterday, we picked up a fellow in Virginia City who was riding his horse. Claims he found the horse wandering around here somewhere. I just wonder if you've seen a man on foot. No. No, I haven't seen a soul since I left Yucca Wells. Matter of fact, I haven't seen anybody since I left Stone River before that. 
Sorry. Well, it was a million to one chance. Thank you, Mr. Buchanan. Okay. Fix that wheel, even if we had the tools. Huh? I know that. Hey, you can. How about letting us out of this sweat box? It's only about uh, 20 miles to Willow Pass. Get there and back before morning. Sure, you could. Unless you made a detour through every whiskey mill in town like you did the last time I sent you for supplies. Yeah, well, that was different. Yeah, well, this is different. So I'm going myself. Case, get the team unhitched. I'll use them for packing. I'll take your horse so I can switch off and make better time. Don't you take your eye over them for one minute while I'm gone. Do you hear that? Yeah. Hey, Kite, you better cut that out. Boy, you got a hankering to do some temperance work. You go somewhere else and do it. you said yesterday that Buchanan will have to kill you before he delivers you to Gallows Pass. Yep, I sure did. What are you waiting for? Right time. What's wrong with now? Jace will be asleep. All you have to do is catch Kite off balance for a second and maybe I could arrange that. be in this for you they gave me a year in gallows pass i'd like to cut that down by about 365 days what'd you do that's none of your business well first lawman that came by i might have to make it some of my business oh, just an honest law-abiding citizen huh that's about it and you wouldn't believe me well maybe not but why don't you try There's a man in Yucca, Wales. His name is Farrell. He owns most of what's nailed down and a lot of what isn't. And when he says jump, all you ask is how high. Well, he took to seeing me socially, as they say, at night when no one was looking. He talked about getting married. And didn't mean it. <laughs> He meant it all right. All he didn't mean was it to me. I mean, I wouldn't take no for an answer. I found myself on the inside looking out. I was arrested, tried, convicted, sentenced so fast. The judge and jury had to wait 20 minutes before the first saloon opened. What did he charge you with? Stealing a stinking little diamond ring Pharaoh gave me six months ago. Look, don't choke trying to swallow that story. I don't care. If you have to go honking after the first town constable that comes along, that's your problem. I take my chances. I'm not asking any favors. You need me to catch Kite off balance. I need you to get out of this godforsaken desert. After that, it's goodbye and good luck. What about that one? I wouldn't trust him any further than I could throw the king of Siam's pet elephant. Well. Well done.
Jeff Ruby? That's right. Uh, my son and I just rode in from Virginia City. Uh, ben Cartwright. Yes, sir? I've been expecting you. A telegram came for you this afternoon. Oh, thank you. Anything wrong? A uh, deputy back in Virginia City found a wanted poster for the man who said he was Sam Johnson. His name is Fred Quinn. Supposed to be on his way to Gallus Pass and Price Buchanan's tumbleweed wagon. Well, Miss Quinn couldn't very well be in the wagon. We left him in Virginia City Jail yesterday. Well, now, Price Buchanan didn't mention anything to me about anyone escaping. No, to us. All he told us was he hadn't seen anybody on foot in the desert. Anybody ever got away from me, I'd ask everyone I saw, wanting all the help I could get. Yeah. I think we'd better have another talk with Price Buchanan. Thank you, Sheriff. and gallows pass. It might make things a lot easier on you if I asked him to. Of course, a fellow does a favor. You should get a favor. I guess so. Pistol out butt first. Now come here. Oh. Get the keys, get these things off me. You stay out of this. Oh, honey, you couldn't drag me into this thing. Now, both of you, get that wagon. Go on. Get in here. You two just run along now. We're wasting time. Sight while you're still able to walk. You're a fool to be stuck with this crazy man. Which way did Cartwright and the girl go? Cartwright. Uh, you mean Mr. Quinn? Daddy, don't you play with me. The footprints will tell you if I don't. The last I saw them, they were headed that way. 
Get out of those manacles. We're going after them. You're going after them, Buchanan. I'm just going. somewhere. Come on. You've been saying that for the past two hours. Look, you can't even be right behind us. I don't care. I don't get you, mister. I don't get you at all. Why are you doing this? What do you want? Come on. Answer me. What do you want? Nothing. Don't tell me. I haven't met a man yet who didn't want something, and most of all was what Kite wanted. You stop tickling yourself, mister, because there isn't any left, not for you or any other man in this stinking world. Now get out of here. Leave me alone. I can take care of myself. Miss Tucker, you may find this hard to believe, but you ain't got nothing I want now or ever. I made a deal, and I'm going to stick to it. Now, you're proving that, that that ain't too smart. Now, I'll do something about that later, but right now we got to hurry. Now, come on, let's get out of here. <sighs> Somebody sure left here in a hurry. Take a look at this. A brand new wheel. They didn't bother to put on it. Just abandoned the wagon. There's nothing in the wagon that says horse was here. Take a look at the tracks, though. Got two people on foot followed by horses. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah. Let's start tracking. Come on. 
friends of yours or I'll blow your head off right where you're standing. Don't be smart, Buchanan. Look, I've got a lot of money in no way. I'll pay you anything. You Shut up! What's the matter? And my money is good as any was. That doesn't answer his question, Buchanan. Right. He's right, Buchanan. Up until you, I never took a dishonest dime in my life. I was a lawman and a good one. Maybe that's what the trouble was. Everybody had it in for me. Buchanan! You've got ten seconds to let Gaddy walk out that door! Good 
girl. <laughs> Miss Tucker, it looks like you and me sort of locked horns, don't it? But I'm gonna let you make up your own mind. You make the decision. You're gonna have to kill me before either one of you walk out of that door. Now you go ahead and make up your mind. I thought you were kidding. You really are an honest, law-abiding citizen, aren't you? I try. Mr. Farrell signed a complaint. He was a prosecution witness, the only one. If anything's done, it's up to him to do it. But if you was to push to have this case reopened, it surely would embarrass Mr. Farrell and his new wife. Well, you know, that's what I'm going to do now. What are you going to do? I'll tell him what you got in mind. It'd be my pleasure. I'd be mighty surprised if he didn't ask the court to suspend Miss Tucker's sentence. I'll see him right away. The cannon's dead. Didn't think he was that seriously wounded. Doc said he wasn't. Free man who wanted to live. I thought I knew all about men. But you sure changed my mind. Well, you, you could have blown a pretty big hole in the back of my head out there in that cabin, and you didn't. Like Kite says, I reckon you do a favor and you get a favor. Is that really the way it works? I think most of the time. But I reckon you have to find that out on your own. Yes, I suppose so. Well, good luck, Miss Tucker. Uh, thanks. Yes. Mr. James Clayton. Yeah, oh, Colonel Clayton, probably in the saloon. Thanks. Hey, uh, you wouldn't want to sell that horse, would you? No, I might trade him if you got one just as good. If I had one just as good, I wouldn't be offering to buy that one. Yep, keep me up for sale. Thanks. Davis? Just 
Not ready to go? I don't know nothing about that. We're chasing a killer from Wells Junction. Well, that's figures. And we haven't eaten since last night. Nos vienen a ayudar? Oh, alimento y agua, ándale, ándale. Todo lo que piensan, alimento, agua y todos. Noche vinieron los soldados, parecían los pájaros azules y se fueron ni siquiera. Looks like we're up to split up, Ben. You actually see those Indians? Oh, no, I won't go out there and get myself killed. I sent the dogs off. Did they take anything? I ain't nothing to take. What about those horses? Oh, these pulling horses ain't riding horses. Yeah. These water bags. Leave these out overnight? Oh, yeah. If that was him that was here, then he's either headed on east or he's backtracked west. Well, headed south. Oh, there's 80 miles of desert between here and Tonopah. Ain't have to be crazy. Yeah, that's true. But he has plenty of water, Jesse. He can make it. And every time we pick up his trail, it's been away from a telegraph point. If he gets to Tonopah, there'll be nothing between him and the boy. You're guessing, Ben. Sure. So are you. All right. You want the desert? You can have it. Sounds like this. We've got the desert. Dusty, you and Jimmy ride west. The rest of us will cut east. I'm sure. Anything cold to drink? Corn Slayer, shut up. you get to the Diamondback water hole, you better come on back here. It's about 30 miles out. All right. Since there's only two of you, you better watch out for them use. How many were there? Somebody said there's eight, but only four of them had horses. There's, there's a cavalry patrol out looking for them. Yeah, they'll catch up. Good luck. Hey. Where's father out? I wonder if we're right. 
Joseph, there's only one way to find out. Which is 130 degrees or more. Am I going to be able to reach that water hole before sundown? Your hands up high. High. Breathe right there. Drop the gun. Okay, you can turn around now. <laughs> I thought you were sleeping kind of sound. <laughs> spooked and lost my water supplies. You prospect? Now and then. <laughs> you sure kind of jumpy. Yeah, well, I had to outrun me a whole pack of Indians this morning. Well, I ain't one of them. 
Could I get me a drink of water? Show you some. Help yourself. Thank you. Stand still. All right, just stay put. Right. We'll be starting early in the morning. Joe, I'll go get the horses. You got a nice. Nice way with rawhide there, mister. It's not too tight, not too soft. You don't seem too worried, mister. It's a long way back to town, mister. Long, hard way. Why are you going through all this trouble? You could just hang me up to the nearest tree and be done with it. You haven't been tried yet. Oh, that's right. First the trial, then the hanging. That depends. Well, you don't think they're going to believe me, do you? Is that what you think? Or is that what you want me to think? I don't really care one way or the other what you think. Hope. That's what you're telling me, right? Hope. See, a man who's going to have a fair trial, he's got hope. And a man who's got hope, well, he just ain't going to give you much trouble, is he? You killed a man, you're going to be tried. What'd you expect? That was self-defense. Then I'll turn you loose. <laughs> you really believe that, don't you, kid? Yeah, got two more canteens, Phil. No. It'll be kind of hard for you to ride with your hands tied behind your back. If you were to give me your word, you wouldn't try anything. You mean you take my word for it? Yeah. Then you're a bigger fool than I thought you was. How's my horse? He's gonna be all right. Did a good job on Where are you hit? 
the leg. Don't you know how to use that gun? I don't know yet whose side I'm on. You better make up your mind fast. Say anything? Uh-uh. I'll say nothing. What's this? Take that now. The rifle, I said, I'll take it. I need some boiling right away. Go on, move. It's a good clean wound. Bullet went right through. Looks like fire. I don't know how bad that's gonna bleed. I feel like coffee pot and bring it up here. Two canteens. That should be enough water for one man to make it across the desert. Yeah, we've walked. Well, you're not going to be able to walk for about a week. That leg needs doctoring now. I can't believe we'll send him. Not even if I was to give you my word? Be back by tomorrow night. Thank you. Take good care of yourself now. I'll tell you about before I go. Don't worry, mister. Ain't nobody gone nowhere. Ain't nothing to carry no water in. And besides, he got the gun. Talking to you. The name is Davis. Mr. Davis, would you get me a drink of water, please? You know where that spring is as well as I do. I don't think I can get to it. Then you got troubles. Man could die out here without water. All day today. All night tonight, all day tomorrow. <sighs> You're gonna get pretty thirsty. Unless we can come to some kind of understanding. And it could be longer. <sighs> you might not get through. This desert is an ugly place. Full of ugly things. Will you get some water for me, please? Guy don't fetch and carry for you, mister. No, sir. But 
I think that I'm gonna fetch me some water. I don't drink. You don't drink. You both. My name is Ben. You got to excuse me, Mr. Ben. It's kind of hard to forget them all ways. <laughs> Mr. Ben. Just Ben. You drink a water. from Blainesville. They didn't get him either. He must have gone south then, like Mr. Cartwright said. Yes, sir. Cut around us and headed back for Wells Junction. Sheriff's already started backtracking. We're going to join him? No, we're going back to Verdon. Maybe Ben and Joe caught up with him. That may be all the way to Tonopah. Well, then we'll just have to go on back to Wells Junction. It's right on the way. Well, how are we going to know? They don't have a telegraph in Tonopah. That's right. <laughs> Pretty bad shape.
I asked. When a man holds a gun, ain't no matter how he says it, he's telling. Is that gun getting heavy? Yeah. Tired. I'm all nice and rested. All right, Mr. Davis. You hold the gun and I'll rest. You must have a lot of faith in me. No. I could have got the gun sooner or later. I won't call you Mr. Ben if you don't call me Mr. Davis. That's your first name? No, that's my middle name. They didn't give me no first name, no last name, just Davis. Kind of strange. What'd you call your horse? Buck. Is that his first name or his last name? canteens yeah uh, he'll be tired but he'll make it by midnight and somebody'll be here in the morning that's when I'm need you trade you in for a horse some water and a head start suppose you won't trade again you ain't gonna need no doctor I got a 
to keep you strong. Hmm. Answer me a question. You believe the answer? Why'd you kill Clayton? Is he a friend of yours? Hmm? Huh? He only got here about a year ago. I didn't know him. Well, I knew him better than you did. I knew him all my life. He's the one who named me Davis. That a reason to kill him? There was others. You ever own a man? No. You ever been owned? <laughs> then you can't begin to understand the reasons. Well, uh, I can understand the hate, though. Men kill for a lot of reasons. Hate's just one of them. You don't know nothing about it. A man that knows something about hate, he don't give away his gun. You think I made a mistake? No, mister. I don't hate nobody now. All my hate died with that man back there in Wells Junction. All I want to do now is stay alive. That's why I need you. You still haven't answered my question. Why'd you kill him? started back to Virginia City another way. Yeah, they could have. They ain't well to head on out, too. All right, Jimmy, you go get the horses. We've kept this man from his work long enough. Oh, no, no, uh, that's all right. I, I was proud to have the company. If any of that posse straggles in, would you tell them we went on back to Wells Junction? Who's we? Well, me and him. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do her, I'll do her. Much obliged. Estos soldados vienen aquí, se van a buscar a los indios donde siquiera no saben dónde están. Yo les sé que ellos sí no me hacen caso. Tú, viejo flojo, que no sirves de nada. ¿Para qué no? Ven aquí en la noche y nos van a matar cuando estemos dormidos. ¿Sabe? No, muévete para allá. Yo creo que está rezando al equipo para que vengan los indios y me llevan por casarte con mi hermana, que es más joven, ¿no? No te conozco, viejo sonso. Something. The only thing I know to do is to cut it open and, and let it drain. You had that knife all this time? It wasn't you I wanted to kill. It was him. Now it's going to hurt. Well, it can't hurt much worse than it does now. Oh, yes, it could. You better bite down on something. Go ahead, do it. Easy, easy, easy. That does it. Come on. Kill that man for a long time. I began 
making this knife to do it with. Ten years ago, right after, right after Kelly. Ten years ago. Right after Kelly. I was moved up to that big house. Kelly was my girl, mister. Ever since we played together down in the quarters, two was old enough to work in the fields. She was the only thing I ever wanted. And he saw, moved up to the big house so he could have her there whenever he wanted her. Never will forget that day. Never will forget them screams for help I saw in eyes. Never will forgive myself for not doing something about it then. Too much now, just a swallow. You can have some more in a few minutes. You all right? Yeah, I am now. Boy's back at the water hole. He's been shot. Can you ride? Yeah. Nobody's coming out there. Guess it's time for the horse trading. Oh. Uh, what happened to Curry? I don't know. She worked in the house about a year. She didn't smile no more. He sold her. See, after the war down there, everything just come apart, you know? People went every which way, and I couldn't find them. So I went looking for him. I thought I was free, but a free man is the man on a big horse. You know? So I got me a big horse. A free man is a man who can take care of himself. So I learned how to use a gun. A free man is a man who can read and write, so I taught myself to read and write. I still wasn't free. All I was was a man with a gun, riding a big horse, reading the signs along the way, telling me I was getting closer and closer to Wells Junction. But for a minute there, back in that saloon, I was free. Just after you killed him? No. Just before, when I walked into that saloon, with the looking all done, there he was sitting right in front of me. But he wasn't the man I was looking for. The man I was looking for was big and strong, with a voice like a cannon, with the power of life and death over everybody. And what I saw there was this ordinary, everyday-looking man, just blinking up at me through them glasses. With no more power over me. 
And I felt sorry for him. I didn't want to kill him. But then I saw his gun coming up, and I had to do something. Well, then you killed him in self-defense. That's what I told you. Well, there must have been witnesses. Yeah, the other man at the table. He saw Clayton draw first. Then why'd you run? Why did you chase me? The man is killed. You have to answer for it one way or another. You're right. Well, I have come a long way, and I'm, and I'm getting tired. All right, Ben. You hold it, huh? And I'll get to you. caught up with them Indians. We saw them in Burton and recognized your horses. Yeah. But they didn't have your gun, so I figured maybe you're still out here someplace. And hurt, maybe. Well, I've done all I can do for you out here. You'll be all right till we get you back to town. Thank you. Joe, so we'll get to Wells Junction. Get the best lawyer in town for him. You bet. You know, you did a pretty good job cleaning out that wound, considering. All right, trooper, bring them horses. See what's going on. Well, Joe will be out as soon as it's over, man. I just want to know why it's taking such a long time. Oh, it's not taking such a long time. I just Dusty, want to look. It seems like a long time. All right, if it'll make you feel any easier, I'll go have another peek. Just like you said it was. Oh, yeah? The man at the table, the other man at the table, he admitted that uh, Clayton drew first. And they dismissed it. Right. See, sometimes it it comes out right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it happens right. What now? I don't know. Any ideas? What you want to do? Where you want to go? Well, I ain't never been there yet. But I'll know it when I see it. Yeah. I hope you find it. Thanks. Thanks. Davis. Sorry. Sorry, man. Thanks. Hey. Still like to buy this horse? You don't think I could walk all the way across that desert to Tonopah, do you? Why not? I almost made it. Yeah. But you almost did. <laughs> Get out of here, will you? Hey, Buck. Do me a favor, will you? What? Next time there's a posse. Don't volunteer for the desert. <laughs>
Thank you.